In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this chatbot here using OpenAI. We'll be using the API we created in a previous video. The link can be found at the top of the screen now or in the description. Let's get started. So I've created an empty project here in Visual Studio Code. So the first thing I want to do is create three new files. The first one's going to be index.html. The next one will be main.js. That's where our JavaScript is going to live. And the next one will be styles.css. Okay, so inside the index.html file, we want the standard boilerplate HTML with a head tag and a body tag. Inside the head tag, we want to import the CSS. So we'll do that by using link. And that will be pulling in our style.css file. And inside the body tag is where we want to create our div for our um, chat box. So the first one will be called chat dash box. Let's close that off. And inside here we'll have a few divs. Uh, this will be the header for the chat box. So this will be chat box header. And inside there we're just going to say chat box. You can name this to whatever you like. Then underneath that we're going to have another div with a class of chat box. So chat box content. And then this is where our content messages are actually going to go. So we're going to leave that empty. I'm just going to leave a note here to say chat messages go here. Okay, and then underneath that, this is where we're going to build our footer, and that's going to have our four minutes. So div class equals chat box footer. And that will have an input of type text. And we'll have a placeholder of type message. And next to that, we're going to have a button. It's going to click send. And then right at the bottom of those divs that we've created, just above the closing body tag, we're going to now import our script file. And that script file is called main.js, the same one we've created over here. So that's everything for the front end part of the HTML file. So next, let's look at the JavaScript. So for the JavaScript, the first thing we want to do is create a couple of constants. Uh, these are to query select certain things inside the document. Uh, so do that we do const and we're going to call chat box it's going to be our first constant and that's going to be equal to document.query selector and then in here we have a class with chat box next we'll have a const called input field and that'll be equal to chat box dot query selector and it's not this one here it's going to be input type equals text. The next constant is going to be for a button, so we can call that button, and that will be chat box query selector button. And then the last constant we're going to have here is for the chat box body. And that will be quick chat box dot query selector chat box body. So underneath here now, now that we've got all of our constants here, what we can do is we can watch the button to see if it's been clicked. To do that, we do button dot add event listener, and that event listener's going to be watching for a click. And rather than writing a function here, we're going to reference a function. So we'll create another function in a minute. We'll send message, and um, we'll keep a note of that. Underneath here, now we can watch for the, if someone presses the enter button, so input build dot add event listener, rather than key up, we're going to have key press. And inside here, we are going to call a function with an event. I'm going to say if the event key is equal to enter, we're going to trigger that send message function. So let's go ahead and write that send message function. So we're going to say function send message. I'm going to have a const in here of message. And that's going to equal to input field value. So it's the input field we have here and it's going to get the value from that. Um, and then what we want to do is we actually want to clear the input field value after this. And now we've stored that as a constant here, we can then clear the value. 
inside the box. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to import the message that we've just sent into the chat box so we can see a record of what we're doing. So we're going to say chat box body dot inner HTML is equal to div and then it's going to have a class of chat box message and then we're going to input our message here and then we're going to close that off. And then we're going to create another function thinking about it, which is going to allow us when someone writes a new message or a new message is put into there, we want the messages to be at the bottom, but we always want to be scrolling to that latest point. So we'll create an extra uh, function called scroll to bottom uh, because we're going to be using this in two places, uh, not just for this one here, but also when we receive the message back from the API. So to send a message to the API, we're going to use fetch. So we write fetch and then we want our URL here that we're going to send it to. So it's HTTP um, backslash backslash localhost 3000. If you're following in with the last tutorial and then we've got to write the methods we're going to go along here. So the method is going to be post. We're going to have headers and we want our content type to be application JSON. And then our body is going to be JSON stringified of the message that's coming through. So this message here is referencing this here. Right, so that's actually all the content we need to send to the API. So now we need to work with the return. So it actually returns a promise. So what we need to do is convert that to a JSON. And then we need to reference that again. And what we're going to do is we're going to say the data here is this response in the JSON here. And we're going to say chatbox.innerhtml is equal to div class chatbox message data dot message. Because the API is actually returning an object which looks like this. Um, so we can reference this part inside of here and just pull this string out. Uh, if you haven't got and if you're not returning an object uh, we can get rid of this message part in the end here and just return the data back onto that one so that's actually the javascript for this written uh, we do have one little thing here which was the scroll to bottom that we need to quickly write uh, it's nice quick and simple so function scroll to bottom and what we're going to say is chatbox dot scroll to top and we want to scroll to the height of the body of the chat box so let's give that a little save. Now before looking at the front end on this, uh, we're going to start working on a few of the styles. Um, so if we open up styles.css, uh, the first thing we want to import is a font. So here I'm using Roboto from Google Fonts. It's free to use. Uh, the body, uh, we want to give that a font family of Roboto. So everything inside the body has the same font family as Roboto. And now we can start styling the actual chat box. So chat box, we have a margin of zero auto. So it's margin zero from the top and then auto from the left and right. So that will automatically center up our content in the middle of the screen. Uh, we're going to give it a width of 600 pixels, a max width of 100%. You have the background color is going to be white. Got to end this one here. So background color white, we're gonna have a border radius of eight pixels, a, a box shadow, and this one we're gonna have zero by four pixels by eight pixels, and we have an RGBA, so we can have the alpha on there, and that's gonna be zero 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 for black, and then a zero point one on the alpha. The overflow will want to be hidden. And we're going to give it a max height of 800 pixels. And a height of 800 pixels. So that's the chat box. Now we need to look at the chat box header. The chat box header. Uh, we're going to give that a background colour and we want that background colour to be blue. So background.
bring on its color. And that's going to be 0084FF, a nice bright blue color. The color is going to be white for the font. We're going to have a padding of 16 pixels all the way around. Font size of 20 pixels. Let's just fix this padding here. We're going to have a font weight of bold. Uh, the border top left radius we're going to have eight pixels so border touch top touch left radius will be eight pixels and we'll also do the border top right radius for eight pixels so what that will allow us to do um, is just have the chat box header the top of it's going to be slightly curved whereas the bottom is going to be nice and angled 90 degree angle so let's move on to the chat box chat box body this will be the content uh, we're going to give that a padding of 16 pixels uh, overflow y of auto the height if we want this to be the 100% height of the box uh, that we've referenced above um, we want this to have a calc of 100% minus 200 pixels and we're also going to give that a max height uh, with the same values but we're going to switch out the percent for a view height so 100 view height minus 200 pixels now we're actually going to start styling out the, the chat messages we see inside so to do this we do chat dash box dash body dot message and that's going to reference inside the javascript this message here so let's change this actually just to message and this one here we want to change to response just so we can differentiate between the message that we've sent and the response we get back from the server we can give it different colors I hit save on that one so the chatbox body dot message, um, I'm going to put a comma so we can reference another one, chatbox dot body dot response. So we're going to target both boxes here, um, just so they all look the same at this point. So it's going to be a margin bottom of 16 pixels with a padding of eight pixels by 16 pixels. So that's eight pixels top and bottom, 16 pixels left and right. I'm going to give it a border radius, eight pixels. So that will work for both the message and the response. So now let's work particularly on just the message, the message that we're sending across. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to give that a background color of um, white, sort of slightly off white here and a grayish sort of color on the text. So now for the response, we're going to have a chat box body dot response with a background color of blue, a color of white for the font, and we're going to align the text on the right hand side. And for the footer, we're going to have a bottom of zero, so it sits at the bottom. Display flex because we want the input field to be sitting next to the button. Align items in the center. Background color of white. Border top of slightly a little bit gray there. And this is going to have a padding of 8 pixels and 16 pixels, the same as what we have here on the message. And to style the input field in the footer, we're going to have a flex 1, padding of 8 pixels. We want it to give that a slight border, so 1 pixel, it's not going to be white, but it's not going to be too dark. And that's uh, E6, E6, E6. A border radius of 8 pixels, a font size of 16 pixels, and an outline of none. And for the button styling, we're going to have a margin left of 8 pixels, so it's not sitting right up close to the input field. Uh, that button's going to have a padding of 8 pixels by 16 pixels to match everything else. Background colour of blue, same blue we've used in the other places. Uh, the font colour is going to be white with a 16 pixel size, and we're going to have that in bold. And we don't want any border on that, but we do want a border radius of 8 pixels, same as what we have for everything else and the cursor we want to be pointer 
Uh, what we're going to have here, we're going to change the background color, just different, slightly different blues. It's going to go slightly lighter on hover and slightly darker on the active. So if we save that now and open up the HTML file, so something's not quite right on here. Let me have a quick look and find out what the issue is. Okay, so I found the issue. The issue seems to be that I've created a chat box body here, uh, whereas in the front end here, I call it chat box content. So if we change that content to now back to body, let me go look at the front end again and give that a refresh. Uh, we can now see that's looking nice. So now if we ask it a couple of questions, say, can you help me? Click send. Yes, of course, what can I help you with? Uh, I have an issue with my math problem for homework. Can you help me with the sum of two plus two? Yes, two plus two is four. How about three times three? Three times three is equal to nine. And what is the square root of 16? So that's a nice, quick and easy way to create a chatbot. Uh, you could quickly and easily manipulate this so it comes up in the bottom corner here on a button press, uh, like you see on many sites. Uh, this is just a full screen version. If you found this video useful, hit the subscribe button and also check out this video on screen now to see how ChatGPT compares with Copilot.